The mitral valve, seen here from a surgical perspective, is a complicated structure and comprises not just the mitral valve leaflets, but also the annulus, the cordae tendinii, and the papillary muscles. Transophageal echo is an excellent imaging modality for assessing the structure and function of the mitral valve, because in most TE views, the mitral valve is relatively close to the transducer. The main body of the mitral valve consists of two leaflets, an anterior leaflet and a posterior leaflet, that lie within a mitral valve annulus. Transophageal echo allows very accurate measurement of both the minor axis and also the major axis of the mitral valve annulus, which is very useful for surgeons who are planning mitral valve repair. The anterior leaflet occupies approximately one third of the circumference of the annulus. The posterior leaflet occupies the other two thirds. And both leaflets are divided into three segments or scallops. For the anterior leaflet, these are labelled A1, A2 and A3. And for posterior leaflet, they're labelled P1, P2 and P3. The leaflet segments are numbered starting from the anterolateral commissure, which lies nearest to the left atrial appendage, and this is where the A1 and P1 segments are, across to the postural medial commissure, where the A3 and P3 segments are. The posterior leaflet segments are relatively well defined because of these indents that lie between the P1 and P2 and the P2 and P3 segments. However, the anterior segments are generally less well defined because the anterior leaflet is a more continuous structure. Transophageal echo provides us with multiple different views of the mitral valve and each view shows us different permutations of segments. And it's important to know which segments are seen in each view so that we can interpret any abnormalities appropriately. During each of the mitral valve lessons in this course, we'll be focusing very closely on which segments are seen within each view. By way of an example, here are two views of the heart. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have a mid-esophageal four-chamber view, which is equivalent to what we're seeing in the diagram just alongside it. The four-chamber view is obtained with an imaging plane angle of zero degrees, and this cuts through the mitral valve leaflets uh, at the level of the A2 and the P2 segments. So here we have the A2 segment and here we have the P2 segment. On the right hand side of the screen we have a different view of a mitral valve. This is the long axis view of the heart. This is obtained at a imaging plane angle of 135 degrees and as you can see from the diagram this also cuts through the A2 and P2 mitral valve segments. So here we have the A2 segment, here we have the P2 segment. Assessment of the mitral valve is not just about the valve leaflets and annulus, but it's also about the subvalvular apparatus, the cordae tendinii and the papillary muscles. And we get to see the subvalvular apparatus particularly well on transgastric views. Uh, this is a two-chamber transgastric view which shows the left ventricle here, the papillary muscles, the cordae tendinii, and their insertions into the mitral valve leaflets. So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited TE Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial account, which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So take care and I talk to you soon.